Welcome back to another video tutorial brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. Today I'm going to show you how to create uh, a sphere like this in Adobe Photoshop CS4 without using a tablet. Um, a lot of people who are mouse users kind of get frustrated because they see people create these amazing drawings with a tablet when you can actually create pretty good and realistic drawings without using a tablet, just using a mouse. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you're going to open up a new file and I've already created a new file. This image is 6 inches wide um, and it's 5 inches tall and it's at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Also have it in RGB mode. So the first thing you want to do is actually create a new layer. So you can go over to your layer palette and um, create a new layer. If your layer palette's not up, you can go up to window at the top and select layers from that or you can just hit F7 and it'll bring up your layers on your screen. And now to create a new layer, you'll click this little button right here and a new layer is created. This is actually the layer that's going to house the sphere on it. So if you double click, you can rename that layer and I'll go ahead and name mine Sphere. Then you want to go over to your toolbar and select the elliptical marquee tool. It may be hiding one of the, behind one of these other guys, but elliptical marquee tool is the tool you want. You can hold the shift key down as you drag out your circle and it will create actually a perfect circle. And I already had that area selected, so let's do that again. And there we go. And there's our perfect circle. All right, then you want to pick a nice uh, color or tone that you want to make your sphere. In this case, I'm just going to use a nice neutral medium gray, but you can use any color that you want. So you can click on your foreground color and select whatever color you want. Like I said, I'm going to select the middle gray. Click OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab a brush. And my paintbrush is pretty large because I want to color this whole area in right here. But I want to do it pretty solidly. So up here at the top, you can see my opacity and flow is turned down. So I'll turn those up to 100%. And then I'll go ahead and color the inside of this circle. Now you could use the paint bucket here if you wanted to. And there we got a good base to start from. Now we need to consider where our light source is coming from and I'm going to make the light source coming from the upper left hand corner for this image. So I'm going to need to have the upper left hand corner of the sphere highlighted. So I'll just switch these two or you can select your foreground color to be white. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got the brush tool selected but this time I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to turn it down to about uh, let's go 20 something. And I'm also going to turn the flow down just a little bit. It's going to make my brush behave a little bit more like an airbrush. So when we go back to our sphere and we start adding where that highlight is coming from, I'm actually just going to make circular movements with my mouse while I hold it down. Just like this. Now once I put a little bit on, I'll go back to the center of my highlight and work out from there again just like I did before. Now I'm not going to go as far out as I did before and then I'll go right back to the center again and make that center part a little bit lighter. And by doing this we're starting to use value to create the illusion of this actually being a sphere. Now we could work on this highlighted area a little bit more and I might add a couple more clicks just to make it a little bit more realistic. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the shadowed part. So just because, uh, just so you know we also we have a highlight right here but we also need to have shadow on the opposite side. So I'll go back to my original gray. I'll double click on it. And I'm going to make it a darker value. Not black, just a darker value. I'm going to keep my settings the same on the brush. And then I'm going to go down here to the shadowed side. And I'm going to start to add shadow down here. Now we're beginning to have something that resembles maybe a three-dimensional sphere, a little bit more than what we had before. All right, so we've got our sphere here. Now to add to the realistic um, nature of this, we're going to add a drop shadow, a shadow on the surface. To do that, we're going to put it on a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer, and automatically that new layer is placed above the sphere. If you click and hold that layer and pull it right behind the sphere, so it's in between the sphere and the background, you can double click on it and I'm going to name this layer Shadow. You can name it whatever you want. Now I'm going to grab my elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to select an area directly underneath it. Now this area doesn't need to be circular, instead it needs to be more like an ellipse or an oval. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this area out just like this. Keeping in mind that the right side needs to be longer because the highlight or the light source is coming from the left side. So the right side needs to be a little bit longer. 
And I'm going to go ahead and pick my brush, and I'm going to pick a darker value of the gray that I've been working with. I'm also not going to go completely to black, but I am going to pick a darker gray. I'm going to keep my brush attributes the same with opacity on 24 and flow on 21%. And then right underneath this, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in the shadow. Now you can go all the way to the edges. Because you've selected this area, it's not going to color outside of it. Now right underneath the sphere, it might get pretty dark. And so we're going to make it pretty dark. And we're going to allow some of that contrast to happen underneath there. Just like that. Now, when I go up to the top and I select all, you can see we've got something that looks like this. But our shadowed edge down here is probably a little bit too hard. It's a little too sharp, sharp around the edges, so that's real easy to fix. We're going to go up to the top, and underneath filter, you can select blur, and then under blur, you can select Gaussian blur. Now you can change the amount of pixels that, that that blur affects. For example, if I go all the way down to 0.8, you can see it's still relatively sharp. Or if I go all the way up to 105, you can barely see the shadow anymore. So I'm going to pick a value that's, well, somewhere, somewhere maybe around 8. That looks good. Look OK. And there you go. You've got a very realistic looking sphere in just a short amount of time drawing only with the mouse in Photoshop um, CS4. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com.